You said like second mean la means last. When there is competition, the only the first place matters. Discipline. What does it mean to you? Everything. Everyone who is determined can be disciplined. The, the thing is that you need to put the goal before your ego mm -hmm. and then it's easy. Okay, let's just start. Welcome to a new episode of the Bridging Podcast. Tomorrow is going to happen whatever we do. Is it better to go into tomorrow trusting a voice, a practice, process, a way forward? Or is it better to go into tomorrow filled with fear and not believing the things that have gotten you here so far? create a new reality. I close my eyes and I will be there. I will dream it. <laughs> Welcome on the new episode of the Bridging Podcast. I am here together with Vladimir Nikolo or his other name, Vlado, his volleyball name. Vladimir Nikolo is a former Bulgarian volleyball player, the former player and captain of his country's national team. Vlado is married and has four children with his wife, Maya, who also has played volleyball professionally. His oldest son, Alex, is on the age of 18, a professional volleyball player in Italy. Vlado has been part of the Bulgarian national team and won five championships. He was awarded as the most valuable player and best blocker in volleyball. And other achievements go like this two times winner of the Cup of Bulgaria, champion of France, winner of the Cup of France, winner of the Super Cup of France, gold medalist of the Champions League, bronze medalist at the 2016 World Championship in Japan, bronze medalist from the Cup World, sorry, World Cup in Japan, champion of Italy, bronze medalist from the European Championship in Turkey, winner of the CEV Cup and champion of Italy in 2020. 10. Whoa. Welcome, Vlado. Hello, again. Oh, it's so good to have you here. I mean, it was um, a lot of words, a lot of achievements. And I would like to start uh, with my first question. You and I, we know each other from Istanbul when I was the school teacher of your second son, Simon or Moni. And uh, we had this parent-teacher meeting. I think it was the first time I saw you because usually your wife, Maya, came to bring the kids. We, you were training a lot. And um, in uh, our parent-teacher meeting, I said to you, uh, I told you about kids and I said, you know, you are also one of the best volleyball players in your area. And you said, no, 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 you just cut me off. And you said, no, I am the best. <laughs> and I was like, no, you are one of them. No, I am the best. And I had to kind of uh, correct myself. Like, okay, you are the best. And my question is, did you always feel like you were the best? No, no definitely not. This was a particular period uh, in, in my career when I achieved a lot. But uh, yeah, definitely not all the time. And um, actually, I was the best for just fraction of, you know, a few months. Uh, and uh, it's uh, in a collective sport like volleyball, it's uh, hard to be, you know, the best, the one. But, you know, this was particular time in, in my career when I had the, the confidence to say so. Okay, so a particular fraction of your career that you felt I am the best and how long have you been playing volleyball? Uh, since age of 11 until age of 39 so a lot 28 years 28 years 11 to 39 and you felt a fraction you are the best what was the thing that was the drive for you to play on such a long time high level volleyball? In the beginning you know, was a kid's play. Then later it became passion. Uh, later on it becomes my my job. So, you know, from different time of my life, there was different, uh, different feelings, different uh, moments. In the end, it was like mm, something that I overextended in the time. And I was, you know, waiting for, for, for the end, waiting to, to finish. 
but it's you know well, depending on different stage of my life and I I have different feelings about about volleyball. If you look back of a career of 28 years of playing volleyball and big part of it professionally, how did volleyball shape you? <laughs> Good question. Actually, the volleyball as you know, uh, most of my life, I, I spent more years playing volleyball than, than not. So volleyball was is part is still it it is a part of my life a really important part. So what I am it's really highly correlated with with volleyball. Yeah, it's it's like this really really important part. So the volleyball identity is kind of in your core the core of your system. I mean, eleven from the twenty eight years you are now forty eight. Even you know more than the half Miss of your year. Miss Are Aussie, you? 45. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 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 45. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Vlado. No, no okay, wow. So it is really in the core of um, how did you come to the highest level of playing volleyball? Like, you know, because as a child, we all start things, right? We start playing piano, we start doing running or other stuff. And then at some point, we stop. But you kept going, and you still keep going. At that time, when I started to play volleyball, it was uh, '88. There was not much things that we can do in uh, in our country. Mm -hmm. There was no computers, no cell phones, no you know. We we lived in country with limited opportunities. When I started to play volleyball, first was for fun, and then. Uh, my parents were saying, okay, you should keep going until the end of the school, so you have possibility, because at that time there was a uh, uh, wish every man should do his military service, mm -hmm. which was like a complete waste of time for two years of your life. So my parents were saying, okay, you continue with volleyball so you can have uh, less difficult uh, military service. And then probably around the age of 16, um, I realized that I'm good. And at volleyball, I have possibility to win, uh, to, to express myself. So it took uh, you five years to realize you are good on the age of 16? Yeah, actually, almost 17. Mm, okay. And then? And then I became pro. I started to play professional and step by step, a, a lot of work. And yeah, here we are. Yeah. So, uh, you, know, you know, okay, you became professional, but there's, you know, I, I uh, think, I'm not fully sure about it, but, you know, once you start becoming professional, like, you know, once you graduate school from, I don't know, teaching school or uh, business school, once you start working, then actually the work starts there. How was it for you then, once you started really playing volleyball, you got paid for it, your salary and your living was depend on volleyball. How did you keep pushing forward? Actually, I, you know, for me, yes, uh, the definition of professional is some, someone who is, uh, you know, some, a job that you do for a living, it means that you are professional in that job. Uh, for me, it's a little bit different because, uh, different because I think uh, when you dedicate most of your daytime and uh, you know most of your life on something, you are professional. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter you are paid or not. So in probably a tenth or a ninth grade, <clears throat> I went to a sports school. And uh, practically how my daytime was related with, uh, uh, with the sport. So probably I became professional a little bit earlier, although the, the first uh, salary arrived at the age of 18. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, uh, at that age already I had, uh, I had the feeling that I'm good at volleyball. I, um, I had uh, some money uh, playing so and I tried to do as much as possible.
Yeah. So you said actually a very important thing here. You say like even though you're paid or not, if something becomes part of the thing you need to do in your daily life, it is professional, either it's paid or not. Was this also the way you grew up, you were raised by your parents? I don't know what to answer to this question. Probably, probably not. Okay. Probably this is something that I developed in myself over the years. So I remember, you know, in one of the conversations we had, um, you said, that was that is actually the reason I asked about the way you raised. You said, like, my dad told me second mean la- means last. Yeah, this is this is true. Uh, every, you know, in every area of our life, it doesn't matter if it's sport, art, uh, economy or uh, anything, when there is competition, the only the first place matters. And uh, this was, you know, this was something that was pushing me over my limits. Mm. Uh, to to achieve that, that you know the recognition of the first place, being yes. n- being number one, being number one for a very long time and many championships in different countries and also for your country. Actually, actually not for that that many times, not for that long. Uh, with different clubs, I had opportunity to win important uh, you know important championships. But uh, I won totally nine uh, championships with, uh, I mean, outside of Bulgaria, uh, because in Bulgaria the level is not good enough. And uh, I participate 17 finals, but for every title that I won, I lost four others. So it's, uh, yeah. From a statistical standpoint, is not is not the best. Mm, okay, and what would what could be the best from a statistical viewpoint to win every game, every, every championship? Okay, every game and every championship is not possible, but to win more. So when you look back at your volleyball career, how do you reflect back on that? Have you given everything you could have? Given? I can, I can say yes. Uh, okay, probably, of course, I was a young boy uh, in the beginning. Uh, probably there was, you know, sometimes when I wanted just to hang out with my friends, uh, uh, just to do the regular stuff that other people are doing. Uh, so probably was not like hundred uh, percent optimal. Uh, but my recipe of succeed, uh, success was that uh, I was doing more quantity and I was trying to do better quality than uh, everyone else. Okay, doing more quantity and the quality better than anyone else. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when the coach says that, uh, let's say we need to do 10 repetition, for example, I was doing 11. Uh, when he was saying that uh, we need to, I don't know, we need to score uh, 10 points, I was aiming for 15. Uh, just, you know, I, I wanted um, to be sure that if one day I look back, I could say by myself that I did everything within my possibilities. Yeah. And I did it. So, you know, I know you, of course, from the Istanbul time a little bit back 10 years ago, 10, 9 years ago. So, but you know, if I would be now the listener or the watcher, I mean, it's, it almost feels like you are telling it so smoothly. Yeah, and this is, I did, like, uh, how do you say it? Like, are you aware and really are you praising yourself of this is what I did? Or um, have you have you learned to do that or did you decide to just be okay with it because i'm so amazed with you know when you're saying i've gotten all this i am a fan of sports i never came to a very high level and i mean that always like you know we could do much better and you or you have done so many things are you praising yourself for it or how do you say it or how are you staying so cool 
You're, it feels like for but, me you stay so cool. But uh, you know, uh, thank you. Uh, but uh, mm, from my my point of view, this this was my life, and mm. I'm the difference between you and me is that my job was showed on TV, and your okay, your previous job was not. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, now it's different. But, uh, you know, there is uh, millions, probably, you know, hundreds of millions of people which are really good at what they do, but their job are not uh, shown on TV, on, you know, internet, on newspapers. And uh, th this is the difference. I, I d don't feel special. Yes, I put a lot of effort on my on what I did on volleyball, but many people put a lot of effort. It doesn't matter if they are teachers, they are uh, bankers, they are uh, working in bakery, or uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, for me, this was the recipe uh, of success. I wanted to be a successful volleyball player, and. Uh, you know, this was part of the process, but you know, I'm just a normal human being like everyone else. Yeah. So I now, you know, speaking about volleyball, it's like my previous life. It's something in the past. I, you know, I would like to be more concentrated about the future and the present. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's such a beautiful thing you said there, like, no, anyone whatever job it is, a cashier in the grocery store, a teacher, a lawyer, a volleyball player, or anyone else. Uh, I mean, it, they do their job and they want to be good at their job. And if they do that the good way, they are not always shown on TV. And the biggest difference with you was like the audience, there was an audience really supporting the team and they saw you. Were you aware of this what you just told because it's a very i feel like a very mature answer but you are also uh you know and older than the 15 18 year old were you already aware when you were younger with this when i was a player you know as i told you that how my life was uh, related to volleyball i really wanted to be successful at volleyball and uh, like uh, my my view, my world was really, really tiny. Now, when I stop playing professional and uh, mostly thanks to my wife and my, my kids, I understood now that, uh, you know, volleyball is just, just a sport and just, uh, you know, some entertainment for, uh, for the people and for the one who plays, of course. Uh, there is much more other important things in our lives than, than volleyball. Do you feel you have more space and time for that right now to really uh, not only see it, but also practice other important things for you? Yeah, definitely. I, when I was a professional player, I was focused 100% uh, on, on my performance. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you know that, uh, okay, my wife was taking care about, about family and uh, until I, I was professional, I was so focused on, on volleyball that I was not even, uh, I didn't know how to pay the electricity bill, the phones, the, 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 anything. I mean, for me it was just, you know, some, some limited family time and uh, all about volleyball. And was not, you know, um, from family standpoint and or from the standpoint of my wife is was not always easy. Yeah. So actually, Maya was your wife. Maya was kind of really big rock next to you, behind you, all around you, maybe. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Without her, uh, nothing uh, from the, okay, nothing from what I achieved will be. Uh, easy or possible. Yeah, she looked after the kids. I mean, all you know, she all the other. She looked after me also. Yeah. Oh, that's a very nice one. She, yes. How did she shape? How did Maya shape you more? Because you know, she actually was playing professionally as well, and after a certain time, she stopped. 
Yeah, she stopped because okay, for realistically, her talent was not enough uh, to play volleyball on high level, and uh, we decided that we would like to be a family, and uh, one of us should sacrifice his career. Uh, and uh, you know, it was the right call that she sacrifice her career uh, because there was less possible benefits from from it. Yeah. And so actually, yeah, she she played two years uh, abroad in Israel. Uh, but when I had my first contract in uh, Erdemir Spor in Turkey, yeah, Ereli Zongudak. <laughs> uh, we we decide that if we would like to be a family, we need we need to stay together. So actually, all the yelling, you know, in the audience, Vlado, Vlado, Vlado. I remember Simon doing this, Vlado. <laughs> Could be Vlado Maya, Vlado Maya. <laughs> okay. So now you have uh, four children, uh, two, uh, three sons, one uh, daughter, and you know, I got to know your first two sons, Alex and uh, Simon, when living in Istanbul. You got later on another son and a daughter. And I know, like Alex is playing professionally in Italy. I talked yesterday to Simon. He's on his way, or, or actually, kind of already playing professionally, semi-professionally. No, no, he's nothing. He's nothing semi. He's oh, a real he pro. Is, he is a pro too. So you know, I was amazed. Yeah. He's only 15. He's turning 16 soon. And when you look back at your career, how? What would you do differently when coaching or uh, motivating them uh, compared to what you did to yourself when being there, a uh, young adult which was playing, and now you are the father, I mean, which played on a high level and they are going. How would you, what would you do differently and what would you tell them different than what you did earlier? I mean, I. Uh... That's uh, often me and my wife, we were speaking that uh, raising the kids is the, our most difficult game, most difficult tournament, most mm. difficult championship. And uh, yeah, we, you know, like probably like many, many parents, uh, we have our doubts, we have our uh, um, discussion. If we did right in this situation, what we can do better in that situation? For for them, you know, from one point of view, it was like uh, easier than for me uh, because from young, very young age, they was told what is right, what is correct, and uh, they was told what they need to do if they want to have you know faster and better results. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, when I was young. You know, there was no one who can teach me what I'm supposed to do in the right way. Many things I was discovering by myself on the, you know, on the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, so from that, uh, that point of view, for them was much easier. From other point, uh, they felt enormous responsibility. Uh, since a uh, very early age, uh, being a kid of someone like, like me, in, especially in Bulgaria, Bulgaria is a tiny country, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, every, everyone, okay, let's say that 50% of the populace know me, and uh, you know, being a son of someone so famous it's 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 hard they need to prove themselves every every day every single practice every game uh, and you know if other kids was allowed to be a kid from time to times mm -hmm. uh, for them was never never possible they was always under the under the spotlight so yeah so how do you guys deal with that pressure? Like, you know, if they feel in Bulgaria, like these are the two sons of Vlado, Vladimir. And, you know, I could feel, I can imagine as a child, like, hey, I mean, there's so much pressure and people watching you constantly, how you do, how do you guys deal with that as a family? 
We had uh, um, a lot of conversation, discussions that they need to ignore all the noise around them and they need to focus on their path. Me personally, I stopped reading uh, uh, sports, uh, sport news and uh, blogs and forums like uh, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. But for, for them, with the first appearance, appearance in national team or first uh, victories in, with, with the club, they needed the approval of the others. Yes. And uh, many times there was like uh, criticized, not because they was performing poorly, but they was criticized because they are my sons, uh, my kids, which is ridiculous. But unfortunately, that's, that's the world in which we are living. You mean like in a way criticize like they are the sons of Vlado, so they have a lot of benefits of being a good player? Do you mean something like that? And and more and worse. For example, I yeah, uh, even when there was one of you know one of the good players in different championships, European championships, world championships. Uh, you know, the people were saying uh, that, okay, they are good, but, you know, their father uh, did this, did that, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous because they are not good enough and their performance is not, not good enough. Mm-hmm. Everyone will see this. Yeah. And they was uh, looking for excuse why, why they are better than, than the normal kids. Yeah. And the explanation was really simple. Uh, Alex start to, to play, you know, to play with different uh, balloons and balls and so on before uh, hitting uh, two years. So and he, the, he was in different gyms around the world even before uh, he was able to walk. Mm-hmm. It's the same for uh, Simon. Yeah. For example, Alex made first his uh, official, let's say, official game with the team of IBB in uh, when he was nine years old. And for Simon, he made his first official game on the age of six. Mm-hmm. Compared to you know to different kids which start age of eleven, twelve, thirteen, there is huge difference at uh, this age. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, there was a lot of pressure on the kids. And I'm I'm happy that they they handle it. Yeah, that's uh, that's very good to hear that they were able to handle it. But I can imagine how uh, difficult it could be. It's like not only in your like in the industry, but any industry. Like you know, even you have these movie uh, the actors, which the children are also becoming actors. And they are looked at like, hey, these are the children of them. Or even in a, you know, a family of, uh, this is the daughter of the, this woman, which is really good at this. How will her daughter perform? I um, think it could be uh, difficult, but happy that they handled it really well. So discipline, uh, Vlado, what does it mean to you, discipline? Everything. If you want to be a professional athlete, uh, discipline, it's a must. There is no, not even a distant possibility that you have success over the certain period of time, not a month or two, but over 10 years without discipline, without, uh, you know, self sacrifice, without complete dedication to the process. It's just in the base. Without discipline, you, you go nowhere. And how do you practice discipline nowadays? Nowadays it's uh, it's different. Uh, it's different because my goals are uh, completely different uh, than the, my goals when I was a player. Uh, let's say that I'm practicing my discipline now when I need to limit myself uh, from you know eating certain foods or eating certain quantity of foods or, you know, the, the things of life. I'm trying to keep my my body weight in normal, uh, you know, what I, what I, I think it's normal for me. Mm-hmm. Having this discipline to reduce the, the calories that I'm accepting is something that I practice every way, for example. 
It's not like volleyball. Uh, practice many times eating and uh, no. quantity. <laughs> no. no, I get it because you are kind of burning a lot, and uh, now yeah. you have to change to uh, your eating. And can everyone? Um, how can anyone that listens to this right now, which maybe has a belief of, you know, I'm not a disciplined person. I mean, is everyone able to practice discipline or create in their life? Either they are an athlete or a, a teacher or a worker at uh, the media, whatever. Can we, is discipline to build? Yes, the discipline is a, co a quality that can, can be developed. And uh, everyone who is determined can be disciplined. If you have the, the thing is that you need to put the goal before your ego, mm. and then it's easy. Put the goal before your ego. And then I mean it's easy. You start with small steps, and then after a year or two, uh, you you the, the small steps will be part of your life, and you won't think about them anymore. You think about the bigger steps or bigger sacrifice. Do you think also, you know, the goal you said, you know, we can set many goals, but the goal you said should be so aligned with a very deeper intention in you that you really want it. Because, you know, there are many people which start on a diet, want to lose weight. They start on Monday and they, it, it finishes, they finish on Thursday, Friday, start on Monday again and it keeps going. They are in a loop of like that. But, you know, if the purpose would be bigger as, for example, I want to be a person that contributes to a world and i need to be healthy for it it's a very different goal then i want to lose weight look skinny or i don't know look muscles this and that do you think your goal should be considered very well and should be aligned to a higher purpose no i don't think so because um, you know an important goal for you may be not important for me for example, probably you, okay, let's say about speaking about weights, probably your goal will be to look beautiful, uh, nice, to be in shape. But my goal will be to be happy, to eat chocolate every day. And, uh, you know, regardless of my body weight. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a such thing like uh, big goals or small goals, because for different peoples, the goals have different uh, value. Uh, but when someone is motivated and is determined to achieve results, then disciplines show up and can be developed. Yeah. But to develop discipline, first you need, you need a goal, okay. something to be achieved. So what did you learn from your parents that helped you in achieving so many things in volleyball? I don't know. I, I cannot say it's one thing or two things. Uh, you know, relations between parents and kids are, are much deeper than that. Uh, for example, what I learned from them is that doesn't matter uh, how successful you are in one area of life. The most important thing is to be a human, to respect the others. Uh, doesn't matter if they are, you know, professional athletes or musicians or actors or um, teachers. Just respect the others and treat them like you want to be treated by them. Be a good human being. Yeah, this is the most, uh, the most important thing. What are you learning from your children nowadays? From four beautiful children? <laughs> I'm learning that they are different person that I was and they are showing me different ways of achieving results. Uh, for example, for me was like um, when I needed to start speaking to different languages in different countries, I had difficulties. And uh, let's even now I have a accent which is okay probably not terrible but not good at all and uh, like uh, my kids Alex and Simon they speak already four or five languages fluently without accent and they 
Of course, they put some efforts, but not, you know, not even a 10% of the efforts I put, uh, you know, back in the days. And uh, they are achieving these results much easier and much faster uh, than it would happen for me. So they are showing me that it's not only way, it's not the only way that we can have results. There is many ways. And the, 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 uh, the way that worked for me doesn't necessarily mean that we work for them also. Were you thinking about this differently before you had kids? Definitely, yes, 100%. Yeah, okay. What is your favorite part of being a dad? Oh, you know, it depends with, uh, with, dif with the different kids. Um, you know, for, for example, now Alex is, is grown up, he's professional, uh, he's, you know, he's handled, handled himself. And uh, f with my relation um, with him, you know, I would like still to be a, a valuable for him. And I would like to help him when I can, which is probably completely normal for every parent. But, uh, you know, this is something that makes me feel good. With uh, the young kids, it's, it's different. It's like uh, to, to take a shower with them or to put them asleep, to read them a story. It's something that makes me happy. The small, the small things in our life are those that are, you know, the most, most valuable if we know how to uh, enjoy them. So depending on the needs of your kids, you actually are supporting them, depending on the needs, the yes. age, the stage they are in. Yeah, because you are still, um, you are still working as a, Volleyball coach, right? No, I'm I'm helping the team with uh, like uh, managing the team. Yeah. Not as a coach. We have a coach in our teams, but uh, I mean many coaches. But I'm helping with organization. And do you still play somewhere no. on the streets? No, no, <laughs> somewhere. no. Somewhere. <laughs> you no. don't play. You don't play. No, not at all. And I have zero desire. Okay. Was it was it like you know you. You know, when you eat a certain food, you get a portion of food, right? And you are looking forward to it. You eat it and you finish. You're like, I have had my portion. That's it. Is it a fee? How is that feeling that you don't have a desire? It's just different. Uh, when I stopped 2016, when I stopped, stopped playing, uh, I, I stopped because my body was not supporting my efforts anymore. Uh, with the age is something that happens mm -hmm. and uh, then with friends uh, they was inviting me okay well, let's go and uh, play some friendly games just to enjoy I went once and never more I went once and the thing was that uh, my brain was ready to perform and my brain was, you know, giving order to my muscles and my muscles was not able to, you know, uh, to, uh, to do the orders that the brain was giving. And uh, first, the risk of injury is really high in that stage. And second, there was zero pleasure in amusement when I knew what I was able to do like a year ago and uh, to, to know everything that I'm not able to do anymore. So, you know, it was like, okay, enough. I, I, I had my time. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. Thank you for that. So now I'm going to ask you five last questions, Vlado. And every question, can you answer it with only one word or one sentence? I will try. I will do my best. Okay. How do you look after your body? I don't know how to say with one word. I mean, <laughs> let's, I, I will try to give you a sentence. Just imagine that our body is like a car engine. We are taking care about our cars. We go to service. We do a maintenance check. We put the good fuel. We change the oil. This is the way I look over my body. I try to maintain my body as 
at best possible shape so my body will serve me many more years. Okay. How do you train your mind? On a daily basis, I'm trying to read, I'm trying to uh, practice, I'm trying to think, trying to solve different uh, situations, puzzles, uh, you, uh, I don't know how it's in English, crosswords. Crossword uh, puzzles. Yeah, crossword yeah. puzzles, normal puzzles, going to escape rooms and so on. I am trying to practice my mind as I practice my body for many years. What is your purpose in life? Be happy. What would you like to leave the world? I would like to leave for educated, grown um, human being, which before everything else are good human being. Very nice, that one. And then the last, do you have a question for me? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm very good. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you so much, uh, Vlado. I uh, appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It has been a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure was mine.